Now we come to the next sutta, 144, Chano Vada Sutta, Advice to Chana. This sutta is also found in the Sangyutta Nikaya. Under the 35th chapter, uh, the sutta is uh, the 87th sutta there. In other words, Sangyutta Nikaya Sutta 35.87. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Now on that occasion, the Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Mahachunda and Venerable Chana were living on the mountain of Vaucha Peak, Vijakutta. On that occasion, the Venerable Chana was afflicted, suffering and gravely ill. Then when it was evening, the Venerable Sariputta rose from meditation, went to the Venerable Mahachunda and said to him, Friend Chunda, let us go to the Venerable Chana and ask about his illness. Yes, friend, Venerable Mahachunda replied. Then the Venerable Sariputta and the Venerable Mahachunda went to the Venerable Chana and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, they sat down at one side. And the Venerable Sariputta said to the Venerable Chana, I hope you are getting well, friend Chana. I hope you are comfortable. I hope your painful feelings are subsiding and not increasing, and that their subsiding, not their increase, is apparent. And he replied, Friend Sariputta, I am not getting well. I am not comfortable. My painful feelings are increasing, not subsiding. And then he described uh, similarly as the previous sutta, uh, 143, uh, paragraph 4, uh, uh, these uh, death pains uh, that he is feeling. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, I shall use the knife, friend Sariputta, I have no desire to live. Mm. So this uh, monk, uh, he says uh, he wants to commit suicide. Uh. His pains are, are extremely painful. Uh. He has no more desire to live. Uh. Mm. During the Buddha's time, uh, it's not like nowadays, uh, we have painkillers, we have uh, a lot of uh, very advanced in medicine. Uh. In those days, uh, monks, uh, uh, like these uh, disciples of the Buddha, when they are sick, uh, uh, they rely mainly on urine uh, as their as their medicine. Stale urine. They keep. They're supposed to keep urine for seven days uh, with some medicinal fruits. Uh. So when his pain is uh, quite uh, severe, uh, like this monk, uh, he no more desire to live. One thing you must understand, uh, even an arahan uh, experiences pain because uh, uh, there are two types of pain, uh, bodily suffering and mental suffering. Aryans have no more mental suffering uh, because Aryans, uh, they understand Kama Vipaka, they understand the Dhamma, they accept whatever comes, uh, uh, unlike an uh, ordinary person, uh, Putujana. But uh, even Aryans uh, have uh, bodily pain uh, uh, due to growing old, sickness and dying. Uh, so, uh, so he experiences the same bodily pain uh, as any other person. And then Venerable Sariputta said, Let the Venerable Chana not use the knife. Let the Venerable Chana live. We want the Venerable Chana to live. If he lacks suitable food, I will go in search of suitable food for him. If he lacks suitable medicine, I will go in search of suitable medicine for him. If he lacks a proper attendant, I will attend on him. Let the verbal chana not use the knife. Let the verbal chana live. We want the verbal chana to live. And he said, Friend Sariputta, it is not that I have no suitable food and medicine or no proper attendant, but rather, friend Sariputta, the, the teacher has long been worshipped by me with love, not without love. For it is not for it is proper for the disciple to worship the teacher with love, not without love. Friend Sariputta, remember this: the monk Chana will use the knife blamelessly. Stop here for a moment. Uh, so you can see from here, he says, uh, the teacher has been long been worshipped by me. Normally, uh, when a monk attains arahun, arahanhood, uh, when he comes to tell the Buddha uh, or he tells other monks, uh, he will say uh, that the teacher has been worshipped by me. Uh, that means uh, he has uh, uh, 
um, given the highest veneration to the Buddha by attaining Arahanthood. So here he is implying that he has attained Arahanthood for a long time. Uh, and this is further strengthened uh, by this last sentence here. He said, uh, Friend Sariputta, remember this. The monk Chana will use the knife blamelessly. The Buddha says uh, in, uh, the, the, in the suttas uh, that if a monk uh, uh, dies uh, uh, as an arahan, uh, then even if he commits suicide, uh, he's blameless uh, because he has finished his work. Uh, uh, so, uh, it's quite clear from here uh, that he is trying to tell Venerable Sariputta uh, that he's already attained Arahanthood uh, quite a long time. Uh. But in the uh, commentary, uh, uh, the uh, commentary to, to this uh, Majima Nikaya, uh, the commentaries uh, which are written by later monks, uh, they say that he overestimated himself, uh, that he was still an ordinary person, uh, which uh, I think is... is, is, is uh, it's not 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 uh, correct. Uh. And Venerable Sariputta said, we would ask the Venerable Chana certain questions if the Venerable Chana finds it opportune to reply. Ask friend Sariputta, when I have heard, I shall know. Friend Chana, do you regard the I, I consciousness and things cognizable by the mind through I consciousness thus? This is mine, this I am, this is myself. Similarly, do you regard, do you regard the ear, nose, tongue, body, mind? Um, the corresponding uh, consciousness uh, and things cognizable uh, through the consciousness. Uh. Thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. And he answered, Friend Sariputta, I regard the I, I consciousness and things cognizable by the mind through I, cognize, I consciousness. Thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Similarly, I regard the ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Mind consciousness and things cognizable by the mind through mind consciousness does. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. And Venerable Sariputta asks again, Friend Chana, what have you seen? What have you directly known in the I, in I consciousness, and in things cognizable by the I through I consciousness, that you regard them thus? This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. What have you seen? What have you directly known? In the ear, in the nose, in the tongue, in the body, in the mind, in mind consciousness, and in things cognizable by the mind through, I con through mind consciousness, that you regard them thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. And he replied, Friend Sariputta, it is through seeing cessation, through directly knowing cessation in the I, in I consciousness, and in things cognizable by the mind through I consciousness, that I regard them thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. It is through see, seeing cessation, through directly knowing cessation in the ear, in the nose, in the tongue, in the body, in the mind, in mind consciousness, and in things cognizable by the mind through mind consciousness, that I regard them thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So this uh, Venerable Sariputta, because he does not have psychic power, uh, is not able uh, to read the mind uh, of this Venerable Chan Chana and determine whether he is already an Arahant or not. Uh. That's why uh, he asked him these Dharma questions uh, to try to test him uh, to see whether he is an Arahant or not. But he replies, uh, his replies are appropriate of an Arahant. Uh. That he says, uh, he sees all these uh, sense organs, sense um, consciousnesses, uh, and sense objects uh, as not mine. I uh, this is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. Uh, and when Venerable Sariputta asks him, how how do you know this? Uh, then he says, um, he has seen cessation. Uh, he has directly known cessation uh, in the eye and eye consciousness, etc. Uh, so this can mean two things. La. Either he has uh, seen very clearly with wisdom uh, or he may have attained a cessation of feeling and perception uh, that's that state uh, where consciousness ceases entirely. Uh, so uh, you can draw two conclusions from here la, when he says he has seen cessation, uh, directly known cessation. Uh, uh, in the sense objects, in the sense basis, etc. Uh, 
either he has seen by wisdom or he has seen directly uh, through cessation of healing and perception. Uh. But either in either case also, uh, you can see from here, he's very sure of himself, Venerable uh, Chana, very sure of himself. When this was said, the Venerable Mahachunda said to the Venerable Chana, Therefore, friend Chana, this instruction of the Blessed Ones is to be constantly given attention. There is wavering in one who is dependent. There is no wavering in one who is independent. When there is no wavering, there is tranquility. When there is tranquility, there is no bias. When there is no bias, there is no coming and going. When there is no coming and going, there is no passing away and reappearing. When there is no passing away and reappearing, there is no here, nor beyond, nor in between. This is the end of suffering. So you can see from here also, Vrav Maha Chunda also probably uh, does not have the ability uh, to determine uh, whether this Vrav uh, Chana is an Arahan or not. Uh. So he gave him this advice. Uh. He said, we uh, bring uh, in one who is dependent. Uh, dependent on what? Dependent on uh, on, on forms, on uh, sounds, on the sense objects, on the sense basis, on the sense consciousness, etc. Just like uh, earlier we read in the Anatta Pindi, Pindi Kovada Sutta, uh, where Venerable Sariputta spoke to uh, uh, this Anatta Pindika, I told him not to, de not to depend on all these sense bases, sense objects, sense consciousness, etc. Uh, then, uh, uh, when the, the, the mind is not dependent uh, on, on these, uh, then there's no wavering. And when there's no wavering, uh, there is tranquility. And then there is tranquility. Uh, there's no bias. There's no coming and going. Uh, there's no passing away and reappearing. Uh, uh, no here, no beyond, no in between. That means no, no rebirth back here or in some other plane of existence or in between. Uh, uh, in between uh, can be like the intermediate state uh, before rebirth, uh, uh, before entering the womb. Uh. Then when the Venerable Sariputta and the Venerable Mahachunda had advised the Venerable Chana thus, they rose from their seats and went away. And soon after they had gone, the Venerable Chana used the knife. That means he committed suicide. Uh. Then the Venerable Sariputta went to the Blessed One and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, Venerable Chana has used the knife. What is his destination? What is his future cause? And the Buddha said, Sariputta, didn't the monk Chana declare to you his blamelessness? And then Venerable Sariputta said, Venerable Sir, there is a virgin village called Pubajira. There the Venerable Chana had families that were his friends, families that were his intimates, families that were blameworthy. And the Buddha said, there are those families that were friends of the monk Chana Sariputta, families that were his intimates, families that were blameworthy. But I do not say that to this extent he was blameworthy. Sariputta, when one lays down this body and clings to a new body, then I say one is blameworthy. There was none of that in the monk Chana. The monk Chana used the knife blamelessly. That is what the Blessed One said. The Venerable Sariputta was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Uh, so here you can see, uh, uh, when Venerable Sariputta asked the Buddha, uh, where was this uh, Venerable Chana reborn? Uh, the Buddha said, didn't the monk Chana declare to you his blamelessness? That means that he already attained Arahanthood. Uh, but uh, even though the Buddha said that, uh, this Venerable Sariputta, uh, was doubtful. Uh, he said uh, there is this uh, uh, families uh, that, were, that were that were friends of Venerable Chana, families that were very intimate to him, uh, families that were blameworthy, uh, blameworthy in the sense that were, they were too intimate uh, with the Venerable Chana. Uh. So the Buddha said uh, that even to the extent uh, that they were blameworthy, uh, but he was, this Venerable Chana was not blameworthy. Uh. Uh, the Buddha says, uh, because he uh, he was not reborn, uh, he didn't cling to a, another body. Uh, and the Buddha says, there was none of that in the monk Chana. The monk Chana used the knife blamelessly. Uh, that means the Buddha is also uh, very, what, very uh, 
definite uh, that uh, the Mount Chana was an Arahan. But the commentaries uh, uh, say a bit different. Uh. The commentaries say uh, that this Mabel Chana cut his throat. Uh, and the, at the moment he cut his throat, uh, fear arose. Uh, uh, meaning he was still an ordinary person, uh, a Putu Jana. Then he immediately meditated and developed insight and became liberated. Uh, it's hard to believe. Uh, I think uh, if he has fear uh, at that stage, uh, it's difficult to calm his mind and develop insight and attain uh, uh, Arahanhood all in a matter of a few seconds. Uh. And also the commentary and the sub-commentary says, uh, uh, when this, uh, this, this sutta mentions, uh, uh, families that were his friends, families that were his intimates, families that were blameworthy. Uh, the commentaries and sub commentaries say uh, the verbal chana associated uh, with families uh, in improper ways. Uh. But I don't think as an arahan uh, he behaved improperly to these families. Uh. I think the most was he was very intimate to them. Uh, probably they were very. Uh, have strong affinity with him through many lifetimes. Uh, so he was very intimate with them. Uh, probably goes often to see them, to teach them the Dhamma, to accept their offerings and all that. Uh. But you can see, uh, since the, the Buddha said, uh, there was none of that in the Mang Chana. The Mang Chana used the knife blamelessly. Uh, that, so you can see from here, uh, what the commentary says uh, cannot, be, cannot be accepted, uh, cannot be trusted. Uh. Uh, the monk Chana, he said, for a long time already, uh, he had worshipped the Buddha. For a long time already, he had attained Arahanthood. Uh, so this is one of the suttas which shows uh, that during the Buddha's time, uh, there were some Arahans uh, who committed suicide. Uh, but uh, in the Buddha's uh, Dhamma Vinaya, it is blameless uh, so long as he has finished his work. Uh, if he has finished his work, he does not take up another body. Uh, that he can commit suicide as, as uh, uh, not blameworthy at all. Uh, 